What is up guys, this is Dope Jay bringing you guys another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things we're gonna be talking about NVIDIA, we're gonna be talking about the broader technology industry, as well as console gaming, and a couple more things in between as well. So we're gonna get straight into it. There was a report that came out about a day ago that states that NVIDIA is planning on reducing the RTX 50 series production by up to 40%. So they said that in the first half of 2026, that um, NVIDIA can cut down their production for the RTX 50 series cards by as much as 30 to 40 percent compared to the same period in 2025. So due to a lot of the memory constraints that I covered in the, the last two videos, you have Micron that's completely exiting the consumer business of selling DRAM and they're shifting everything towards enterprise. Samsung and SK Hynix are doing similar things right now as well, where they're shifting a lot of the supply of DRAM modules and SSD modules towards enterprise right now it's creating a huge shortage for consumers but also the cost of manufacturing dram is up as well so um, for people who need to supply dram for things like graphics cards pcs consoles and stuff like that the cost is really really high right now so that's causing a lot of these manufacturers these oems to charge more for their products as a result um, not only just that, but there's going to be a massive shortage of supply for these products as well. We already see this happening with DDR5. SSDs are rising in cost as well. And this is going to impact GPUs as well because GPUs need VRAM. So I, I talked about this like two, three videos ago about how um, this was going to be an issue for all parts of technology. In particular with the PC market, the PC market is going to feel this really, really hard because um, a good portion of people who get into PC gaming is do-it-yourself. So a lot of the do-it-yourself market, supplying your own components, things like SSDs, RAMs, GPUs. We've seen in the past where we had two crypto booms, once in 2017 and then in the early 2020s, 2021 and parts of 2022 where um, Bitcoin and Ethereum mining was very, very popular there was a shortage of consumer GPUs because a lot of people were buying those cards to mine Ethereum and Bitcoin um, when it was very profitable to do so during that point in time. Now it's buying a lot of RAM for these AI data, data centers to train these models. And that's where the supply is being shifted right now. So there's a shortage right now that's happening with that, as well as um, SSDs. And we're in a situation we're in right now. And the do-it-yourself market for PC gaming is going to feel a first. Like I mentioned before, happened a couple of years ago with the crypto mining boom. And now we have this AI CapEx spending craze where there's a lot of money being pumped into these data centers and these solutions that are needed to um, train these AI models. And like I mentioned in my previous video, these models need GPUs, they need um, RAM as well as storage. So very, very fast RAM, very, very fast GPUs. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the AI component later. Um, now, this report about NVIDIA cutting production on their GPUs, particularly the 50 series for consumers, is unconfirmed, but I believe this report because a similar thing happened during the crypto boom where there was a shortage of, of like RTX 30 series cards being supplied to consumers because what was happening was NVIDIA was taking those same dies that were being manufactured for the GeForce cards and they were supplying crypto miners directly with those um, GPUs because there was a lot of um, demand from the crypto miners and they were making a lot of money on the side from that as well. So I broke this down before where if you look at the revenue, like the, the, the revenue segments of their business from NVIDIA, they make hand over fist a lot more money off of um, data center production versus gaming. Um, data center, their revenue, is it's like miles and miles away from where the gaming revenue is. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in contracts that they're getting from the, the demand for their, um, their AI chips as well. So um, I don't think that this is gonna last too long. I'll give my reasons in a little bit, but yeah, um, I, I said this as well. I said, hey, if, you're, if you were looking at buying anything like any gpu storage or anything like that the time to do it was in the fall and the spring because right now uh, right now prices are bad it's going to get even worse now according to this report right they're saying that nvidia is not going to raise prices right away 
um, which is making me think, okay, if they're not going to do it, the retailer is going to do it because they're not going to have the supply. And obviously right now, for the 50 series, there's still a demand for it for people who are on like, you're talking about like GTX 2060, 2070, 2080 users, a couple of Ampere users, so RTX, you know, 3060s, 3070s, maybe even 3080 users who might need more VRAM, more compute to run their games, especially when we're talking about the newer games that are coming out, um, you know, the beginning of next year, going into 2027, these games are becoming a lot more demanding and you're going to need more VRAM. You're going to need more compute to be able to run those games at um, stable frame rate. So a lot of people who haven't upgraded, we're looking to upgrade now. And then you have to think about the component of people who are in like AM4, for example, right? People who are still in AM4 running something like a, a 3900X, 3700X, um, 5800X, and they were looking to move to AM5 so that they can get the new 3D processors with DDR5 and have that level of performance increase as well from the CPU and memory side, they can't switch platforms right now because RAM is so expensive. So a lot, a lot of it's cooked. And then we can also talk about the, the console side of this as well. Consoles already seen two price hikes this year, right? We've seen the price hike from, from Sony with the PlayStation 5. They increased the cost of all their models by 50 bucks. And then Xbox, they, the, the cost of their consoles got hiked twice this year. And then the cost of Game Pass, well, when they restructured Game Pass and, and ultimately making Game Pass more expensive, right? So they increased the cost of Game Pass by restructuring that service into three tiers. And then Nintendo, instead of them inc increasing the cost of their console, they increased the cost of everything else, like the accessories, their games and stuff like that. But I'm anticipating that Nintendo might do a price increase. And here's why they have to pay 45% more for the memory that's needed, like the DRAM and the storage that's needed for the Switch 2. And if you guys have been paying attention, there's been reports saying that um, Nintendo has been losing like uh, like millions, if not billions of dollars in, re in revenue and like value right now because of this RAM shortage right now. So this is this is impacting everything. And some people are like, oh, like console gamers rejoice and stuff like that. And I'm like, listen, you guys got hit with this first in regards to price increases. And it's only going to get worse for console gamers. So like I said, console prices have already seen the price hikes this year already. And then there was another report that was put out as well that PS5 sales this year is down 40% versus where it was last year. And then Xbox sales is down 70% this year versus where it was last year and then switch 2 even though switch 2 came out during the summer of this year i think it was june it had a launch date of june it's down 10 percent. so console sales are down and i i made a cigar yap session talking about this about how parts of gaming is going to correct itself i i've been saying this for the longest and i'm going to continue to hit on this point parts of gaming is going to correct itself one of the areas i talked about was hardware um, PC hardware and console hardware. The numbers are there. Console shipments are down. People are not buying consoles at the same rate that they were in the previous years. What we looked at from 2020 until about 2024, console sales were running hot. I made a video about Xbox and I said, hey, Xbox is having a steady, steep decline in their hardware sales and you need to sell hardware. Hardware matters. And people will try to make this argument that selling hardware doesn't matter. It's a ridiculous argument. It's not based on any facts because you need to get people in your ecosystem. And while the PlayStation 5, even Nintendo has a great base of gamers and they can sort of navigate through having a down year. And I think it's going to trend until next year as well, because these conditions are going to last for a while. It's not going to let up anytime soon. Um, when, when you're looking at the market conditions of, hey, console prices are elevated versus where they were before pc hardware is elevated versus where they were at before and from the majority of this year hardware prices for at least for pc was was really really good you can get a, a 9070 xt for msrp you can get a 5080 for msrp and then ram prices and, and um ssd prices were really really good for most of the year now it's increasing so you're going to see a downward um, spiral in regards to the amount of units that they're going to be able to sell from these retailers. You're going to see more reports from specific retailers, whether it's Micro Center, Newegg, Best Buy, Amazon, about 
shipments for PC components declining in a similar way that we see console um, shipments and sales declining this year because of the price hikes, right? So you also have to look at the market in a much more broader sense as well, in the sense that, you know, inflation is still running hot. You know, the, the Federal Reserve, they're trying to cut interest rates so that they can make sure they can have um, price stability and maximum employment, but unemployment spiking. It's at 4.5% right now. It's it's spiking right now. And there's more people unemployed than there are jobs. Wage growth is shrinking. So you also have to think about this from a broader market sense that, hey, you know, there are a lot of people, like the majority of people are struggling, like we're in a K-shaped economy. To bring this back to the AI conversation, it's like I mentioned before in the NVIDIA video, as well as the Micron video, the demand for these components are from these AI companies. OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, they're trying to build as many data centers as possible. The issue is a lot of the AI CapEx spending that's happening right now in the AI space, ranging in the trillions of dollars in spending commitments, right? We're talking about a total of about like $3 trillion um, of confirmed spending commitments from not only just the manufacturers who are making the hardware that's needed for the data centers, but also um, these companies who are building these AI models and then the financing that's taking place as well. A lot of it was free cash flow initially, but then it was debt being taken out from banks. So issuing out bonds um, from these companies, but then off balance sheet financing as well. So securing private credit to be able to fund these data centers. And what's happening right now, when you look at a company like Oracle, for example, right? Oracle is on the hook for a lot more debt on their balance sheet than there are bringing in revenue currently. And I'll put the screenshot for that so you guys can see that. They're on the hook for a lot of money for these data centers. And there was a report that came out recently that their data center that was supposed to be coming out next year got delayed until 2027, maybe even 2028. And it's a partnership between them and OpenAI to get um, some of their data centers opened up as well. So my, my thought behind this, right, is the fact that there's so much you know, tricky accounting, off balance sheet financing and debt that's being used to buy up the hardware and to fund these data centers. But there's no real revenue and no real profits being generated from a lot of these companies when it comes to their AI solutions. A lot of these AI solutions are being integrated into existing services that are already making money. But when you think of a service like ChatGPT on its own, 90% of the users of ChatGPT, they don't pay for it. They just use the free tier. So the, the problem for a lot of these companies is figuring out how are we going to generate the revenue needed off of AI to sustain the amount of spending that we're doing and the debt that they're taking out as well. So that's a fascinating thing to look into. I'm going to put some articles in the description. I always source my information in the description for you guys. Make sure you guys check that out. Um, in other news, that's all I really have for this video. Make sure you guys like, make sure you guys subscribe. For, for more information, for more news. And this is pretty much for the, for the video. Peace.